Hi, and welcome to Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Today I'm going to read to you from No Rest for the Wicked by Naomi Valkyrie. Chapter 1 Delilah. My lighter flares in the room's darkness, flashing a glimpse of the dead man next to me in the bed. A sigh escapes me as I exhale the smoke from the freshly lit cigarette. When did my life become so mundane? Another night, another man. After several hundred years, I'm kind of over it. Flinging the blanket off of my legs, I swing them over the edge of the bed, then reach for my pants and boots. Shimmying into my pants, I fasten them. The jostling of me putting on my boots causes ashes to, from the cigarette to fall onto the floor. Without a backward glance, I make my way through the house in the dark. On the way to the front door, I grab my shirt off of the back of the couch and slip it over my head. Leaving the front door open behind me, I stroll out into the night, not even waiting around to revel in the screams when the guy's wife comes home and finds him dead. Lila, are you listening to me? Sheridan asks as she snaps her fingers in front of my face. She'd be wise to withdraw that hand, or she might end up with fewer appendages. Yeah, I'm listening. I lie. I have no idea what she's been prattling on about. Not much holds my interest these days. Sheridan pouts. You liar. You haven't heard a word I've said. Can the wounded routine share? It doesn't look good on you. She grabs her glass off of the bar with a huff and then pushes through the crowd, leaving me blessedly alone with my thoughts. Usually, I wouldn't mind being behind the bar, but I've been so restless lately. Even hunting cheating men isn't holding my interest, and that's what I'm built for, lust and vengeance. I might be losing my sanity. I can't even enjoy a good scream of terror from my prey anymore. Yep, I am definitely a sorry excuse for a demon right now. Normally, by this hour, I'd already have a mark. I've always been able to pick out a cheater. Maybe it's because that's what got me to demon status in the first place, selling my soul to get revenge on an ex. A stupid, childish deal made by a much weaker human version of myself. There are plenty of potential targets here tonight. They all bore me. A sigh escapes me as I lean down to get a fresh wag, rag to wipe the bar off. Maybe I need a vacation. Wiping down the bar mindlessly, I contemplate where I would even go if I took a vacation. The mountains? The beach? Nothing sounds good, but I definitely need to break myself out of this rut. Glancing up, I see Sheridan across the room, cozying up to her latest victim. She certainly hasn't lost her pizzazz. Mine fizzled out somewhere along the way, and I didn't even realise it. The man she's with looks ordinary, nothing special about him at all. But no matter how mundane he looks, there must be something in him she's drawn to, some weakness she's out to exploit. Her being a hedonism demon, the possibilities are endless. As I watch Sheridan interact with her target, I realise that maybe the ordinary experience is what I need. I haven't had a break from my murdering rampages for 200 years. I'm likely experiencing burnout. Even demons need a break once in a while. I don't know why it's taken me so long to figure it out. I finish out the night at the bar, leaving a note for Sheridan to take over while I'm gone. She'll hate it because it'll cut into her hunting time but I could not care less. She'll get over it. Locking up the door that leads from the main floor to the hallway that accesses my apartment above the bar, I bounce up the stairs to my loft. I'm going to take a break, get out of the city and see where I can relax for a bit. For the first time in a long time, I feel happy or what passes for my version of it. Chapter 2. Delilah the trees fly by the window as I drive my newly acquired convertible past the edge of a large forest area. I wasn't sure if I'd remember how to drive, having not done it for quite some time, but it turns out I had nothing to worry about. 
My biggest challenge is remembering to obey the speed limit. I don't really want to start my vacation with having to kill an officer of the law. I'm trying to take a break from all that. I have no idea where I'm headed. Don't really care. I'll stop at any time that looks quiet, any town that looks quiet and rent a place. Maybe I'll even take a part-time job just for the fun of it. I can pretend to be anyone and no one will even know the difference. Three days into my impromptu trip, I pass a worn out sign saying I've entered the town of Juniper Lake. I turn off the main road onto a side road that looks like it hasn't seen a maintenance crew for 20 years. Slowly, I trundle down the road, grimacing every time the bottom of the car bumps the ground. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Surely there are other small towns around here with better roads. Unfortunately, there's no room to turn around. There's barely enough room for two cars to pass each other. I'm committed to this jaunt, whether I like it or not. Slowing down even further, I creep along until the small centre of town comes into view. The heart of Juniper Lake is quaint. There are a few storefronts, post office, a tiny gas station, pretty much all the things you'd expect in a town that looks like time forgot about it. Pulling up in front of the antiquated gas pump, I turn off the car and head into the small convenience store. The older man at the register drops the newspaper when he sees me enter. For a second I panic, thinking I forgot to hide my horns. Quickly, I check my reflection in the glass, long, dark brown hair in loose curls, brown eyes, pale skin and no horns. The illusion around my horns is holding up. Must just be me then. My presence draws attention, even when I don't mean for it to. To his credit, the man recovers fairly quickly. Don't get many visitors around these parts. What can I do for you? You lost. I smile my best human-like smile, hoping to put him at ease. Wouldn't do to scare the locals on my first day here. I'm not lost, just taking a break from life for a bit. Are there any places around here for rent? He contemplates for a minute while scratching his greying beard. Well, there's a cabin out by the lake. Owner passed on a few months ago. It's for sale, but the realtor might rent it out to you. You can find her over there at the general store. Ask for Shirley. Nodding in agreement, I hand him a 20. Thanks for the info. I'm going to fill up before I head over. Keep the change. He takes the money, then goes back to his newspaper. As I pump gas into my car, I look around to locate the general store. It's fairly close, so I leave my car at the pump after it's full and walk over. It's not like there's a line of people waiting for gas. My combat boots thud heavily on the wooden walkway as I walk up to the general store entry. I probably could be more subtle. After all, I'm trying to lie low and blend in. Drawing too much attention will have the locals on my doorstep trying to satisfy their curiosity. I already draw enough attention just being me. The bell rings as I open the door and a voice calls out, I'll be there in a minute. I peruse the aisles while I wait, keeping an eye on the counter. It'd probably be a good idea to stock up on food and supplies while I'm here once I know if the cabin is available. A few minutes later, an older woman with her grey hair in a bun comes bustling up to the counter and I walk over. What can I do for you, honey? Looking for Shirley. You her? She eyes me suspiciously. I might be. Who's asking? Guy at the gas station told me there's a cabin out by the lake that's for sale. Thought I might see if I could rent it for a bit. As she eyes me up and down, I do my best to appear non-threatening. She must decide I'm okay because she pulls the key out from under the counter. How long are you planning on staying? Not sure yet. Couple of weeks at least. Shirley eyes me again. You running from something? I look down at my clothes. Black leather pants, black leather jacket and combat boots. To people in this town, I probably look like trouble follows me. Just life, ma'am. Just running from life. Rent is $250 a week and I'll need a $250 deposit. You get the deposit back if you leave the place in good condition. 
Pulling out a roll of cash, I count out $750 and hand it to the wide-eyed woman. Inwardly, I facepalm. I'm not really good at this lying low thing. I bet no one in this tiny town walks around with a roll of cash just waiting to be spent. I've been spoiled by city life. Sure, I have to blend in with humans, but there are so many people around that you sort of get lost in the crowd. These small towns are a hotbed of gossip and nosiness. I'd forgotten that in my desire to seek out a slower-paced environment. My arrival will probably be all over town within the hour. No matter, I guess. I'll be out to the cabin by then. If I load up on supplies now, I won't have to come back to the town for at least a week. Turning from the counter after I sign the rental agreement, I pick up a basket and toss random things into it. I'm not much of a cook, so I'm all for things that I can eat straight out of the container or microwave. In the corner, I see a clothing section. It's basic stuff. I grab a few generic t-shirts and a few pairs of jeans. I'll probably need to dress a little less rebel and a little more small town if I want to lie low. Once I'm satisfied with my supplies, I pay for everything and haul it all across the street to the gas station where I left my car. Pulling the directions to the cabin out of my pocket, where I'd crammed them after Shirley handed them to me so I could carry the bags, I spin around in a circle looking for the dirt road indicated on the first line. When I don't see it right away, I shrug and figure I'll just drive in the general direction and figure it out as I go. Opening the car door, I take one last look around and release a contented sigh. My well-deserved break officially starts now. Chapter 3. Delilah Twenty minutes later, I pull up to a cosy cabin that looks like it's been kept up pretty well. The lake sparkles behind it in the setting sun and I notice it has a private dock. Getting out of the car, I take a deep breath of fresh mountain air and absorb the quiet. No city noises. No neighbours for miles. The only other cabin I can see is across the other side of the lake, which is not close enough to bother me. Taking my supplies out of the car, I haul them up to the porch and then unlock the door. Once I'm inside, I can see there's not much to the place. A living room, a kitchen dining area, two bedrooms and a bathroom. Pulling the supplies inside, I get them stashed in the kitchen cabinets and then plop down onto the couch, putting my feet up on the coffee table, intending to deal with the clothes I purchased later. I look at the small clod of dirt my boots dropped on the table and wince. Probably should have taken them off first. Oh well, too late now. Taking out the pack of cigarettes I'd stashed in the pocket of my jacket, I pull one out and go for my lighter. As the flame sparks up, I realise I don't smell any residual smoke in the cabin and sigh. Looks like it's back outside for me. I'd hate to lose the deposit I put down for leaving smoke smell in the place. Not that I can't afford it. It's just the principle. Stepping out onto the back deck of the cabin, I light up the cigarette and pocket my lighter. As I lean on the porch railing, I wonder what I'm going to do now that I'm here. Maybe I'll go hiking or catch up on some reading. When I'm not out slaughtering adulterers, I like to curl up with a good book. Not that I'd tell the other demons that. I have a reputation to uphold. Blowing out a last ring of smoke, I put the cigarette out in the dirt of one of the potted plants then make my way down the steps to the trail that leads to the dock. Once I get closer, I see that there's a canoe tied up beside it. When was the last time I was in a watercraft of any kind? I can't even remember. Maybe I'll teach myself to use the canoe while I'm here. That's mundane, right? It's something a normal person would do on vacation. Since it's getting dark, I figure I'll go in and amuse myself with a book and mess with the canoe, canoe in the morning. So far, my vacation is exactly what I wanted. Uneventful. <laughs>